जी बिस्मिल्लाम स्टार्टर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन टूडे इज दैरवन सराय But when we talk about the caravan sarai, the first question which we, which comes to our mind is that what is the caravan sarai, and what is the etymology of this word? Here, the first word is caravan sarai. Where did it come from? So I think we have to go to that question first of all. Now, the coming to the etymology, the word caravan is uh, the root of caravan is uh, in this word kafre. Which mean a kind of action, a kind of work, or a kind of progress. So when we say car, it is a verb, and when we say car, it becomes an action or a performance. <clears throat> and a, perf- a person who is performing some time of work or some time of action, he is known as a carigar. And a place where a number of people are working together for some kind of performance or some kind of action or some kind of construction, that place where they are working together. that place is known as the workshop and when we say kare rawa kare kare is obviously an action a, a work a kind of work and when we say rawa that mean a continuous an action which is in transit so that when we say when we use the word kare rawa that mean there is a, a group of people who are con- continuously in they are in transit that mean they are moving from one place to another so that is the etymology of the word karirama and actually there as a word is karirama it became known as karwan for example we have a ruler like shah jahan the actual word was shah jahan but now we simply say shah jahan and like nur jahan turned into nur jahan so these are the slightly abbreviated versions in the same way the karirama is today known as karwan the second uh, word which is associated with this is the sarai and it has its root in sar that means seen or ray when it's used the word sar it is applicable in english also which is s i r it is uh, in uh, urdu also as a sar and it is also also in punjabi sir jaise baar dafa hum kehte hain na sir da sai the person who is uh, covering our head to aam taur pe jo khawand hota hai hamare culture mein उसको सिर कहते हैं एंड देन फ्रॉम सिर और सर वी हैव द सरा व्हिच इज द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ सपोर्ट एनी काइंड ऑफ सपोर्ट व्हिच इज बीइंग गिवन टू समबडी और सम पब्लिकेशन दैट इज नोन एज द सरा एंड फ्रॉम सरा वी हैव नंबर ऑफ अदर वर्ड फॉर एग्जांपल आसरा इज वन व्हिच इज अ काइंड ऑफ हेल्प और सकर और असिस्टेंस हाउ टू बूस्ट समथिंग और काइंड ऑफ एड एंड इसी से बहुत से लफ्ज और निकल आए हैं जैसे सार बड़े लेकिन सीटों के साथ सार का लफ्ज आ जाता है या सर का लफ्ज आ जाता है जैसे अमृतसर तो सर इज आल्सो ए काइंड ऑफ प्लेस और प्रोटेक्शन देन सरापा इज द एब्सोल्यूट और कंप्लीट कवरेज एंड दैट फ्रॉम दैट वी हैव द सराय द प्लेस दैट हेल्प्स और सपोर्ट सम वन एंड विद मैन इज से कारवान सराय दैट मीन ए प्लेस व्हिच इज हेल्पिंग द कारवान और द पीपल who are in that caravan so that is the beginning of our lecture <clears throat> now caravan sarays were in with the central courtyard often found in the desert that served travelers along the silk road in asia and north africa and normally if you look at this if you look at this diagram the nearly all the caravan sarays was like this there was a strong boundary wall and there used to be a main gateway and then in the center there used to be a courtyard and around that courtyard there used to be many cells or hujras or rooms and generally every hujra had a four court or kind of veranda in front also and some in some certain cases some rooms were larger some were smaller if the traveler is with the family they will they will get larger room if it is single it will get they will get a smaller room and so on but at the gate at the point of entrance it was not a simple gate but it was a gate house and when i use the term gate house that mean there is a building which is serving as a gate plus the office why office because uh, when the people were coming into this rai a record was kept of those people and when they were leaving once again the record, record was checked that they are leaving at the same time their belonging was checked how many how many the horses they have with them how many camels they have with them how well, what is the other material which is uh, with them because the 
In most cases, the caravans rise, <coughs> particularly in the age of the Muslims, or where the where the caravans rise were in the Muslim areas. Often the services were provided free of cost, as we will see in the later part of today's lecture. Now the caravan has passed through many, many countries and many regions with the different type of cultures and different kind of societies and different kind of languages. So the in this slide with the name which you see in yellow, they were not normally the caravan rise in the Muslim countries. For example, Karavan Sarai, sorry, in, the, in, in Persia or Iran, Khan and Han is Turkey, Ribat, Ribat is in the uh, Arabic world, and Sarai is in uh, countries like Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. The rest of the name which you see in this uh, slide, they are in uh, the, most of them in the Western countries, because the route of the, on which the Karavan Sarais were built, the route also went into the western part of the world, which is known as the Europe. And this map shows you the, the line, the long line of the route on which these caravans rise were located. The route started actually from China. If you see the red line, it started from China and it continued through China and then it went to Persia and then it moved on to the west, that is the Europe. The red line show the land routes and the blue line show the sea routes. But most of the caravans were obviously held on the sea route, uh, sorry, the land route. Caravans could not be built on the sea. But this, uh, when we look at the route, then we see the part of it coming to the area which is Bangladesh today. Part of it is coming to India and Pakistan over here. And then it passed through Persia and uh, Turkey and Iraq and then it went to the area which is known as Canaan in history. So this is the basic route of the Silk Road. <clears throat> but uh, this is another route of the Silk Road defined by Janet. At many places you will see red dots. These red dots indicate the placement or the location of the important caravan rise. The Silk Road, uh, this road was initially not known as the Silk Road, it was just a road. And or like you call it a tariq or a shara, something like that. But then the Silk Road uh, or the map was coined by a German geographer uh, or a cartographer and an explorer whose name is Ferdinand von Richthofen. He was a German and basically he was an explorer or a cartographer or a geographer. The geographer is a person who is studying the earth various kind of the characters of the earth. There are a lot of uh, mountains, there are seas, and there are lakes, and there are rivers. So a person who is studying all these elements of earth that is known as a geographer. And the job of the geographer is also to write down these details in, the, in a diary and then produce them in a <coughs> printed manner. The cartographer is the one who pre 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 prepares the map the cartographer is the one who prepares the map of the areas which a geographer is studying. And that is a very important part of the work of a geographer. And explorer is, of course, uh, the, when the geographer is working, they keep on exploring new and new things and new and new characteristics of the earth or the areas which come into their study. The overland Silk Road an ancient route across the Asian subcontinent from China to Asia, in Asia, to Turkey and the Mediterranean, where the routes extended by sea to Europe, Arabia, and North Africa. So these are the most important linkages of the Silk Route. And obviously the idea was to tell you that the route was not initially known as the Silk Route, but it, the, the terminology or this term was coined by the German geographer. <clears throat> this is the person who coined this, uh, this term or the terminology of the Silk Route. Now this, uh, the, this uh, picture on this side, so when they, when the uh, called this road as a Silk Route, then the news were published in a newspaper, the German newspaper, and that is the facsimile of that German newspaper, which is shown here. And this uh, slide also tells you the Silk Road was and is a network of trade routes connecting the East and the West. 
and was central to the economic, cultural, political, and religious interactions between these regions from the second century BCE to the 18th century. So the long, long time, for a very long time, this route served the traders and the travelers and the businessmen and also people who were on the religious duties. So that is the performance of this route, but this route became known as Silk Route uh, because uh, the Chinese silk, a highly valued commodity that merchants transported from along this, these trade network and then advances in technology and increased political stability caused an increase in trade. So because of the lot of, because of lot of the Chinese product, which is silk was being exported from China to the rest of the world. On account of that silk, the road or the routes became known as the Silk Route or the Silk Road. So that is the most important thing. But not only that, the, not only the silk was coming from China, quite a few things were going toward China also. For example, the most important thing was the spices from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent was going toward China. And then uh, a bad aspect of this uh, Silk Route was that as the, the West became uh, under the influence of Chinese silk or Chinese trade or Chinese exports, they started sending uh, hashish and marijuana to China. And it so had happened in the history of, the history of China that China almost became a victim or addict to the opium. So, ek sumana aisa bhi aaya history mein ke China tamam ka tamam mulk opium aur afim kha kha ke bilkul nashe mein chala gaya, and all the development came to a standstill. And then ultimately, <coughs> the Chinese had to fight. Chinese had to fight numerous uh, opium wars against the British to get rid of this <coughs> menace. Ultimately, got they got rid of this. And then in 1948, one year after our independence, they became independent. And uh, I often ask my student, look at this, the Chinese became independent one year after us, where they are today and where we are today, a lot of distance between the development or the education level of the two countries. We are nowhere. We are going in the reverse gear while the rest of the world is going advanced in their yes, advanced okay. That's the very sad aspect of our development. Very, very sad. Okay. So the when I was talking about the trade routes, this is another map which explains that there were basically three routes. One was the northern route, then there was the central route, and then there was the southern route. And the classification or the bifurcation is in this manner. The green line shows you the northern routes, the red line shows the middle routes, and the blue lines about the southern routes, which come to our areas also. <clears throat> now, the, when you are talking about these uh, caravans rise, now the, this uh, slide tells you that the journey of the Mughal rulers to Kashmir used for the Mughal travel to Kashmir road. After beginning their journey, the entire Mughal caravan would pass through Shadara, that is from Lahore to Shadara, then Wazirabad, Gujarat, Kotla, Ravali Khan, Bimbar, Jangar, Noshara, and then Chingas. These uh, names which are in green color, they are in Pakistan. Then Rajauri and uh, Thanamandi, Surankot, Bafali, Bafali As, Nuri Cham, and Chandimar, Koshana, Pir Kigali, Chopian and Khampura, Sarai and Sirinagar, they are under, not in India, but under Indian occupied Kashmir. So that is the difference of this route. When Jahangir became Mughal emperor after the death of his father Akbar in 1605, he visited Kashmir several times. Kashmir became his favorite destination in most, almost every year. During the summer, he used to visit Kashmir along with his whole Darbar and beloved Empress Nur Jahan. <clears throat> now, there was a reason for traveling to Kashmir every year. The reason was that he was very fond of drinking. And uh, toward the end of his life, he got so used to drinking. Then it used to give him some kind of intoxication. 
वो ऐसे होते हैं जैसे एक दवाई खाते रहे तो फिर उसका खत्म हो जाता है इन द सेम वे पी पी के उस पर वो शराब का असर ही खत्म हो गया देन है तो दी ओवरऑल रिजल्ट वॉज कि उसके फेफड़े वेफड़े फैलने शुरू हो गए खराब हो गया बीमार रहना शुरू हो गया एंड देन ही वॉज एडवाइज बाई एस तबी एंड द फिजिशंस दैट इज ड्यूरिंग द समर he should not stay in the heat of the punjab but he should go to kashmir to have some better weather and better living conditions and that was the reason why he used to travel to kashmir every year and because of the journey uh, is the queen that is nurjahan nurjahan was a very expert kind of lady and that she excelled, excelled in many kind of expertise for example she was a very good embroiderer she was very good in making different kind of perfumes so gulab ka atar jo hai sabse pehle usi ne banaya tha samosa usne ijad kiya which was initially known as sambosa wo is tarah usne shoes ko design kiya aur ek juta to khaas taur par usne design kiya and dedicated to her husband which is still known as salim shahi salim was uh, the original name of emperor jahangir तो मुझे समझ नहीं आती कि एक खातून ने जूता ही क्यों डेडिकेट कर दिया अपने खाम के नाम एम्ब्रॉयडरी में उसने बहुत से डिजाइन किए सेम टाइम ही वाज ग्रेट पोएट आल्सो राइटर एंड ए गुड कैल लाहौर में उसका मकबरा बना तो शी हैड प्रोडिक्टेड कि उसने कहा कि बर मजार मागरीबा न चिराग ना गुले कि मेरे कुछ गरीब की मजार पे तो ना कोई चिराग होगा ना कोई गुल होगा ना परे परवाना सौज ना सदाए बुलबुले ना यहाँ कोई परवाना आके अपने पर जलाएगा और यहाँ ना ही यहाँ किसी बुलबुल की आवाज आएगी <laughs> तो उसने अपना फ्यूचर बड़ी अच्छी तरह प्रिडिक्ट किया और देखे उसके मकबरे का हाल क्या था अब तो थोड़ा सा रेस्टोर हो गया तो बेहतर लग रहा है बट एट ए टाइम एंड शी वॉज दिडल ऑफ दब कॉन्टिनेंट 